making some dinner, and I was thinking a little bit about DNA. Give me a second. All right. So DNA is a lot like cooking in a cookbook, if you want to make a special analogy. So in each one of your cells, remember, you have DNA, your deoxyribonucleic acid, your genetic information makes you who you are. And inside those cells, the DNA is found in the nucleus. Now, in every single one of your cells, you have your entire genome. Makes you who you are, even a scary looking person. They've got their DNA in their toes and in their face. It's the same DNA wherever in their body. But the DNA is not expressed in the same way. It doesn't go through the same protein synthesis every single part of your body. If it did, we would have things, genes for eyeballs being expressed in your knees or genes for nose being expressed in your toes. You turn out to be a pretty scary person. But these A's, T's, G's, and C's are only turned on or off in the right cells that they need to be turned on or off on. So it's a lot like cooking out of a cookbook. For example, you're not going to cook every single meal in your cookbook all at once. That would be ridiculous. You wouldn't have time. Your meals would be gross. They would get cold. It just wouldn't work. But you will, for example, make broccoli cornbread at one time. So pretend these were my genes for my intestines. I would only express the broccoli cornbread or intestine genes in the cells that needed to. And just like your cells, your DNA doesn't really leave the house. This cookbook's not going to leave the kitchen. But in order to get the ingredients I need, I'll have to transcribe it, I'll write down a copy of it, and I'll take it to the grocery store. It would be just inconvenient to remember to lug around this cookbook everywhere. So if my kitchen was a nucleus, what leaves the area of the kitchen is going to be our RNA or our recipe list. That's about as far as the analogy goes. But let's talk about some differences between DNA and RNA right now. Remember your DNA is made of A's, T's, G's, and C's. These are nucleotide bases or nitrogenous bases. Oops. But in order to get that DNA out of the cell, it needs to be sent out of the cell with RNA. RNA is made in a copy in the process of transcription. Now, some big differences between RNA and DNA is that RNA, there are three main types we're going to talk about in this class. There's actually a lot of types of RNA, but we're going to focus on mRNA, rRNA, and tRNA. mRNA is our messenger RNA that leaves the nucleus with that genetic message. Our rRNA makes up the ribosome. It's our ribosomal RNA. And then tRNA is our transfer RNA. This is the stuff that's going to bring over our amino acids to build our proteins. Of course, whoops, I skipped ahead. Mm, that cooking smells good. RNA is single-stranded, where DNA is double-stranded, and if you notice, the bases, there's no T's. In RNA, we only use uracil. All right, and last but most, not unimportant, we have a ribosugar in RNA. That's why it's called RNA, ribonucleic acid, instead of deoxyribonucleic acid that has a deoxyribosugar. All right, I better get back to cooking my meal. Uh, I'll see you guys later.